invented the internet. Um, <laughs> So sign, sign, everywhere, sign, blocking out the scenery. Don't do that, do this, don't do that. So SEO just, to me, means you've got to do these things, but don't do these things, or you're going to mess up your search engine ranking, but you've got to do these things, but sometimes you don't do either one of them because everything's changing, it's all evolving. Um, so it's a, it's a, um, a never-ending uh, struggle to, uh, to keep on top of all the, all the different changes, and as, as Greg alluded to, a lot of the rules that were there five years ago have been broken and have been exposed or uh, exploited by spammers and so on, so we don't do those things anymore. Meta keywords, for instance, were a great thing once upon a time, but all the uh, pharmaceutical companies and the enhancement companies and everything started throwing all their keywords in there and ruined it for the rest of us. So what we have to do is keep up with all those things. And Greg did a great job talking about all the various different things that you have to keep track of and what you need to consider when you're doing search engine optimization. But you're left sometimes with, wait, I got this site that I created five years ago. It's got thousands of pages. How do I possibly get started addressing SEO on these things? And you can, often, you can hire a consultant, which, you know, go ahead and do. I'm sure Greg would be happy to, <laughs> to have you as a client. Uh, but there's actually some things you can do yourself. And there's a number of toolkits. Google has a web toolkit, Bing has a web toolkit, and so on. So there's a number of tools out there to help you get started, to get you past that 80% um, scenario where you can do a lot of things just by looking at your pages and seeing what the state of them are. So what I wanted to do today was show you one of those tools. So I'll take about 15 minutes or so, just kind of walk you through the tool. Uh, the tool is called the SEO Toolkit and it's part of uh, Microsoft's web platform. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk you through what the tool can do for you and let you experiment on your own, because it's a free offering, you can download it, and I'll give you the uh, link right here. So Microsoft.com slash web. I guess I never introduced myself either, I should probably do that. Um, my name's Jim O'Neill, I actually work for Microsoft, I'm a developer evangelist, so I work with development communities and talk about various uh, aspects of the Microsoft development stack, web, cloud, client, Silverlight, just about everything. So um, I wanted to come and give you a little bit of uh, some tactical advice, perhaps, for SEO. Um, if you go to the uh, Microsoft uh, slash web, Microsoft.com slash web, you'll get to a page where you can download what we call our web platform installer. And this is an, actually a great place to go, especially for anybody um, starting off doing web development on Microsoft software, because you can download just about anything you need to get started. You can download our web server, IIS, you can install not only uh, Microsoft technologies, but also the D Word, Drupal, WordPress, all of these things are available inside of the web platform toolkit. Um, I'm sorry, in the web platform installer. Um, so web, Microsoft.com slash web, and then you would install the web platform installer here. What it does is it downloads a small application onto your machine, and that application always phones home every time you run it to see if there's anything new that's available to download from Microsoft. So after you've downloaded, what you'll get is something that looks like this. And this is it phoning home. So it's loading the latest web platform products. And what it's presenting you is all the uh, various options that are available for the, for the web platform in terms of uh, utilities, such as request routing, a URL rewrite, that was on one of your slides, you can download that, that's a free utility as well. And the web platform itself, so IIS will install that and configure it for you. Web applications, so this is where you can go get Drupal, you can get WordPress, you can get um, various other uh, open source uh, utilities, CMSs, and so on. So all these things will run on Windows. Now one of the things you can download from here, and this is uh, getting to the SEO toolkit, is the IIS SEO toolkit. Now you don't see it in this list because I've already installed it. I don't know if it will appear a little later down here or not. Uh, this is the what's new list. If I go into the web platform, maybe we'll see it in here. Uh, Jim, may I have something? Yep. Um, I, hate, I hate tools, SEO tools specifically. I hate them. Um, <laughs> I, I looked at this tool and was impressed with it. I actually recommend using it. Oh, excellent. Great. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad you said it that way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no one has to fix it from. Well, yeah, it's very hard to yeah. find because there's so much subjective. I mean, it is. Yeah. You can find something in SEO and somebody can just, just prove it. Yeah. But it's a great. It looks like to me a great tool. 
it, it's definitely a part art, part science type aspect of things. So um, what you would do to get the toolkit, again, is uh, go to the web platform installer, and then this is the little box that I checked here, and I've already installed it locally. So I have this application running locally, and um, I wouldn't have to use the web platform installer anymore after that point, unless I wanted to grab an update or, or some other aspect of the stack. So the SEO toolkit, when I run that on my machine, um, you get something that looks like this. It runs inside of what we call IIS Manager. Don't let that scare you. Um, the SEO toolkit is very, very easy and straightforward to use. And it comes in, um, or it contains really three main sections. Uh, so the first section, uh, the one we're gonna spend the time on is the site analysis, but I wanna just uh, spend 30 seconds on the other two, because these are things that, uh, that were mentioned earlier as well. The robots exclusion, so that's the robots.txt file. That's the stuff you don't want to, the search engines to uh, follow on your, on your site. So this provides an easy way to set up rules for the, uh, the robots.txt uh, file uh, for a website that's sitting on your local machine. Likewise, sort of the, the inverse of that, or the converse of that, is site maps. These are places on your site that you encourage the web uh, crawlers, the web search engines to index on your site. They don't have to, but it's sort of a recommendation that they do that. So this is so opt-in, opt-out type options. Now site analysis is the really cool part of the SEO toolkit. And what you can do with site analysis is essentially create a new analysis, my very cool website, and put a URL in. So you can actually do any site that's out there. It doesn't have to be a site that's on this local machine. It can be anything you want. Uh, you could do www.microsoft.com. You can do www, as this is the one I like to do. Actually, this is, this, is, this is one step away from that. Um, SEO Moz is sort of one of the, 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 the well-known sites on search engine optimization. So sometimes I will index that site just to see how well the search engine optimization company did the search engine optimization. Um, and they do actually pretty well. Um, there's a lot of false positives that come out of these tools that you have to be aware of as well. But I'm not gonna run through this because what it does is actually just indexes the site for you. So it crawls, this application is essentially a web crawler, crawls through all the pages on that site and then indexes them um, looks at the content and slices and dices all of the data and creates essentially a database uh, that you can then introspect through various different queries and so on to get a feel for how <coughs> SEO friendly your particular site is. So if I were to hit OK, well I can actually do that, I can cancel it. Um, you'll see that it's going to start processing that site and it's going to be uh, I'm, I'm connected. So it's analyzing the URLs and following all the, uh, all the links and so on. That can take a while depending on how big the site is. So I'm going to cancel out of that because we don't want to sit there and wait for that. Uh, and what will happen is you'll get a report and it will report how many quote violations is detected in terms of SEO rules. But it'll do a lot more than that as well. Not just SEO, but it'll detect dead links. It'll detect pages that are slow to load. It'll detect all kinds of things that you probably want to know about your site. So I'm going to go back and not going to look at that one because I've uh, indexed a site that I actually started working on over 10 years ago. So this is a pretty big site. It's actually since been ported, um, and I wasn't part of that porting, so any errors or problems with it are not my fault. Um, but it's a site that's been around for quite a while, before we really knew what SEO was, and before we knew to do things, or perhaps it was well known to do things like put alt tags in and stuff like that. So I thought it might be interesting to run that one, and we can take a look at what the SEO toolkit offers us in terms of figuring out how, how good your site is. So the First thing you're going to see is just a report overview. So it tells you how many links, how many pages it looked at. And I've got 5,339 violations here, <laughs> which is a little scary. Um, what's kind of cool about it, though, is it will break those violations down for me. So it, it organizes the violations in different categories. So there might be a standards violation, SEO violation, content violation. Uh, the content violation is just plain invalid markup. So that should have never gotten past QA. That's like an ending tag that doesn't have, or a beginning tag with no ending tag, those types of things. Some of the other things, though, are, um, are more SEO standards based. And you're gonna see a lot of things in this list that you just heard about um, earlier today. The page contains multiple H1 tags. Well, an H1 tag is designed to say, this is the most important thing on the page. 
like you said, if you have 27 most important things on the page, does that really make a lot of sense? That was a technique that a lot of spammers used to, call, to bring attention to their content. So when you click on this particular warning, you'll notice that there's 33 pages that have too many H1 tags. So I can double click on that. Oops, my resolution's a little low here. By the way, they, this, this tool is brought to you by somebody who owns a top tier search engine. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's got a little street cred behind it. It does. Yeah. It really does. Um, so when you go into that particular error, what you're seeing here is all 33 pages. So you can find out exactly what pages they were for every page. And most of the uh, most of the um, entries in this uh, in the, the whole uh, SEO toolkit look very much like this. So you double click on a page, and it shows you this same type of information. So it's basically telling me what an H1 tag is all about, and why you shouldn't do it, and what you should do when, when, if you've done it, how you should fix this, how you should remedy this particular problem. Beyond just telling you there's multiple H1 tags, you can actually look at the content, and it will show you the entire content of the page. Uh, it's usually, it's smart enough to find the H1 tags in here and highlight them for you. So for different errors, it will actually highlight the, the bit of HTML that's a problem. Wait, there may be. <laughs> I've noticed it's, it's not always uh, super good about finding that the, the offending element, especially start and end tags, it doesn't really know where to, where to, what to highlight and that sort of thing. Uh, I can view this page in the browser, for instance, so if I were actually want to see what it looks like um, as it would have existed on the page, I can bring it up and, and take a look at it. Um, in this particular case, it's not very helpful in terms of uh, diagnosing the H1 error. Uh, let's see, what else can we do here? We can look at the headers so we can see what the HTTP traffic was going back and forth, the request that was actually made for that page. You can see that it's now a PHP site. It used to be ASP.net. Uh, word analysis is actually a kind of cool thing here. Uh, so what it'll do is it'll take the content of that page and it will find the unique words, then it'll find the unique two-word combinations and the unique three-word combinations. And when you start thinking about search terms and the short tail, long tail of of your um, uh, of the keyword that you're going to be using on your site, this might give you some insight into what are valuable keywords and keyword phrases for a site that's already out there. Uh, links, you can see how many inbound links and outbound links you have as well. Yeah. Uh, so for word analysis, does that yes. include common English word like a oh, lot? Uh, or is, can you actually customize? Uh, I don't know. You can't customize in the tool, let's look and see. Well, we do have what, we have will. Uh, let's see if we have the in here. Well, we have there. So maybe it's somewhat smart, but not super smart. Um, what I can add to what it's doing here is that this entire toolkit is extensible. So there's an API that you can write your own filters, you can write your own analysis, and add that into here. So if you want to do something a little bit more complex or, or focused on your particular domain, you can do that as well. Um, it takes a little bit of coding to do something like that, um, but you can certainly add on to uh, add on to the capability here as well. Uh, another cool thing that you'll see here is the text. And at first I thought, well, who cares? What's so interesting about the text? But the reason that this tab is interesting is this is typically what the search engine sees, is the text. So this is the embedded text on your page with no markup, no formatting. So these are the textual elements on that page. And it gets more important as we start talking about things like Ajax and Silverlight and Flash, because as more and more sites incorporate those elements, there's less and less text. So the text on the page is typically what the search engine is going to see. So I'm going to jump off of this site. I want to show you another site that I ran this on. And just to, to be fair, this is actually a Microsoft site. And I'm going to look at the violations for this site. Actually, I'm going to look at the content. There's a page in here that I need to uh, find. I'm sorry? What the violation? Everybody wants to know what the violations are, right? Um, no, alt, no alt attribute. Um, so yeah, these look like legitimate violations, perhaps, that these things don't have attributes. Uh, this is a divider, an image divider, so it might be like a spacer or something. I don't know. So um, it, it's you air your dirty laundry when you go through this. <laughs> you definitely do. Um, but the uh, the one that I wanted to show you here is this. If I can find the page, uh, where's the main page here? Content. Come on, I had it. Shorts. 
slope regions. There's a slope page one as well, yeah, so you can find uh, how, how slow your pages are. So if you have a large image, for instance, it takes a long time to download. And again, uh, we just heard that slow pages are now becoming part of the search engine ranking as well. Uh, there is a link. link yeah. Oh, here we go. Thank you. I, I uh, found it earlier. There should be a default. I can't find a default page for some reason. Well, let me just go back to, I'm sorry, I can't find the, uh, the right page to pull up here. But if we look at any one of the, uh, the pages, what I was going to get at is um, when, when you look at the actual text on the page, if you look at the Microsoft Surface page, so Microsoft.com slash Surface, it's a very gorgeous silver light experience. And there's a lot of information in there that you can navigate through, but it's all in silver light. If you look at the text for the page, it's very sparse. There's hardly anything there. About the only text in there is, is a little bit of text that says you need the silver light player to view this page. So the search engine, the search um, agents and the, the robots aren't going to find anything on that page to index. So in that regard, that page isn't all that discoverable. Now there's certain techniques that you can use with Flash and, and uh, and Silverlight as well to embed textual elements that won't be seen if you have the Silverlight experience. So it's a down level type of experience. So it's kind of like the no script tag that we used in, in the past. Um, you can embed content there that will the search engine will be able to see. Everybody that has the Silverlight plugin and the Flash plugin will see the nice Flash experience, but the search engine uh, crawlers and so on will see the textual. Um, information and be able to do uh, indexing on that. You have to be careful though because the bad guys have figured that out too. So they'll push a bunch of garbage into these no script tags. So you do too much of that and then you, you switch over to becoming potentially uh, black as a spammer. So you have to walk a, uh, walk a very careful line there in terms of, of using those techniques. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to be conscious of time uh, because you can go into any one of these things in, in infinite detail and really, um, and really start talking about the various aspects of SEO. So title being too long is something that we heard about earlier. Title must not exceed 65 characters. Is that the number that you uh, provided? It was pretty close to that, right? Yeah, uh, 65, 66. Yeah. Um, Google will show a little longer one, but who cares about Google? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got that to keep track of too, and the whole idea about pushing um, pushing keywords closer to the front end of your title tag. Uh, there's one in here that talks about the title beginning with a brand name. So what this is basically saying is my site is called NJCL, so all my page, a lot of my pages started off with NJCL. And well, that's not distinguishing that page. It's providing uh, essentially a brand which looks more spammy to a, to a search engine um, in terms of, of the title. So it's suggesting that I put that at the end. So what this is, tool is really doing is reinforcing a lot of the ideas you've heard about tonight and flagging those things in your site so that you can actually take action uh, on them and presumably you know, fix your site. A couple other cool things about this is that all of these things that you're seeing here, all of these little reports that I'm doing, are essentially queries. So think of the Search Engine Optimization Toolkit as having indexed essentially all your pages and stored them in a big database. These are queries canned queries that we think are kind of important and interesting for you to help look at your site. But you can add your own queries. So I can create a new query here, for instance, that basically says, I want to find all of the pages where the violation code is, title is missing. So we heard that the title, for instance, is the most, perhaps the most important piece of the, of the markup that you can put in a page for SEO. Well, one of the first things that I want to do is find all those pages that don't have titles. I want to fix those right away. So I can write a query that does that, execute the query, and here are all those pages, and now I can go, go to town on those particular pages and add, add titles to them. Now in this particular case, this is actually one of those false positives. If you look at the URLs here, these are all CAPTCHA images. If you know what CAPTCHA is, that's that, um, 
that little thing that you have to type in. It's a picture and then you have to type in the letters so that it knows you're not a spammer when you're doing blog entries or, or um, commenting on something. So these are really false positives in that case. Um, they, these probably shouldn't have titles. And I'm not even sure actually why there why they're actually pages out there to begin with. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful uh, of that. But um, you can essentially do all kinds of queries. So you've got all kinds of fields and you can do ands and that sort of thing between the two, uh, between the multiple uh, elements of the pages in, in terms of uh, pulling up the information that you want to, uh, to do with your site. You did diagnose a problem, though. Yes. Potential problem, anyway, which I think is cool. With the, with the, with yeah, the I mean, time was it? Yeah. Well, uh, many, many, 94 pages. That, right, and there's uh, actually a couple of potentially legitimate ones in here. Yeah. Um, there's some forums in here, and every time I see forums, I think, yeah, I don't know how, how important if those you are. you disallow those, will, the, will they show up in the report? Uh, I can disallow them, so it shouldn't, I could do... I would say robots tags. Yeah, whatever. I can do a robots text thing. Yeah, um, cool. On the, uh, let's see, if I go back to the original, I start one up and I say new analysis, there's actually an advanced settings here. Uh, so I can say ignore, no follow, ignore, no. no index, and those types of things. So I have a little bit of control over in, in that regard as well. So all these things, again, are queries. You can write your own queries. You can save your queries. And what's even, I think, really even cooler about this is I can save the results of this search engine optimization run, and I can do it every month. And I can do compare the uh, compare the results, so I can see how well I'm doing, perhaps as I'm progressing through, um, you know, through to trying to make my my site a little bit more search engine friendly as well. Uh, it looks like you can export many of those. Reports. And you can, yeah, you can export everything. You can export as CSV. Let me see if I can um, get a decent report. That's not an interesting one. Let's go to the violations again. Uh, so somewhere in here, I can say export. I'm having problems with my resolution. I keep getting, getting uh, the window up where I can't actually touch it. There we go. So I can, uh, let's see, can I do an export here? Actions. Somewhere I can do an export. It's not behaving very well. There we go. Uh, view in browser, view details. There is an export somewhere here. Uh, that's going to do it. Yeah. I'm obviously still learning to navigate my way around here. Uh, there's always something new that I'm finding because there's a lot of different tabs, there's a lot of different information presented here. But I wanted to just spend 10, 15 minutes to throw it out there at you so you knew that this tool existed. Again, you can index any site that you want. So it could be yours, it could be somebody else's, you can maybe see how somebody else is uh, ranking with search engine optimization or what techniques they're potentially using to improve their search engine optimization rankings and so on. Uh, very cool, um, and it's being updated. as as time goes by. So when you use the web platform installer, the next time I run that platform installer, I'll be informed if there's updates for this toolkit or for other toolkits that you might download from the installer. And stuff. Any questions on all that? I know that was a very fast run through. It's something you're gonna have to sort of play with at home and get a feel for what it can do for you. Yeah. Any plans for a Mac version? Any plans for a Mac version? Hmm. <laughs> I'd have to say, <laughs> I'd have to say yeah, no. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Probably not. Um, have you heard of Parallels? Okay, so run Parallels on your Mac and, and load a VM and then run this. This really does leapfrog uh, uh, I haven't played too much with some of those other tools, but I've heard a lot of, from people that have, are sort of in the SEO field, I've heard a lot of good things about this, about this tool. I, I, which I, what, you know, I was impressed when I, when I watched the video and, and watching this. I, I, the, uh, I want to show you one other thing that is not a, it's not really a tool, but I always thought this was kind of cool when you're talking about doing searches. Anybody seen the site Bing versus Google? Yes. So you can type a search in here and see what the how the different search engines rate rank things. So you can use your own site, for instance, and do searches on your own site. Some interesting things come out here um, that sort of reinforce some of the stuff that we talked about. So click me. Or click here, not click, click me, click here. <laughs> Any guesses? I'll give a book, not to you. <laughs> if anybody can tell me what site comes up a number one on Google when I uh, when I do a search Google, for click here. Google, Google. I think it's Bing right now. You think it's what? 
I think it's, it's going to be doing it right now. No, it's going to do Bing on one side and Google oh, okay. on the other. So what, what, which, what, Google, what site will Google rank number one for this search query string? Facebook. No? Oh, come on. i got to get a book away. <laughs> <laughs> Google search engine number one. You're going to smack yourself when you see it. One of, those, yeah. one of those pharma yeah. companies for the drug. No, not a pharma company. Yep. Yeah. No, no. You're, you guys are good at you. Okay. Let's just do it. YouTube? Adobe. Adobe. Think of all of those Adobe. links that say click here that bring you to a PDF. Yes. So, what does this mean? It means that the anchor text is important in some degree in terms of search engine ranking. It also means that there's something a little different going on between Bing and Google, because Bing ranks at number three, and actually puts a company called clickhere.com at the top, which I think is a clever name for a company, given how they've sort of uh, you know, turned the search engine stuff on its, on its end in terms, of, uh, in terms of getting their own links at the top. So use the word, what did you, can't, not cannibalize, use another word for in terms of um, parasiting or something like somebody else's, somebody else's site. There's another interesting thing that uh, came about, and I almost thought you were going to talk about it, but there's another uh, interesting query you can write, which also talks about uh, uh, anchor, anchor text. Misl miserable failure. <laughs> okay, I've got a book now for anybody that can tell me what Okay. Yeah, so the, the answer to this one, it's a little different today than it was when this was going on. But the, uh, what comes up is George Bush. <laughs> and <laughs> the reason for that is that some guys got together and decided to create anchor text that's a miserable failure, and they loaded it up with an href to George Bush's presidential website. And they got on these things called Link Farm, so they started cross-indexing everybody, so it started getting traction and gaining up in the rankings. Um, Google figured it out, and it's now called the Google Bomb, doing things like that. Um, and if you'll notice, you'll see George Bush sh shows up on Bing, but he doesn't really show up, I don't think, at all in the Google site. There's a lot of talk about <laughs> this phenomenon happening, but the site itself doesn't, doesn't show up because Google has done something to uh, de-emphasize de the usage of that. And that's what you were talking about as well. If you have thousands of pages that say Bodors, this is the same. This is what happened there. Yeah, there was, there, there was, there was some, some theory that this couldn't be done, and this was a test. No, it, it was done. It was a very good. Uh, the test was a, a success. And if you're on the other side of the fence, you could do, do a search for waffles, and you would get John Kerry. So I don't think it was quite as famous. <laughs> I don't think it was quite as famous as the uh, miserable failure one, but you know, in, in the interest of fair play. The waffle. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I'll leave you with that. Um, I hope that was a, at least an introduction to what, to what exists out there for you in terms of um, more tactical SEO, taking your own site and, and figuring out how well, you, how well you fare. And then you can take the other advice that you've heard here and then improve it. Thank you very much for your time.